Hi guys, happy fall. I'm filming this right after Halloween and I just have a lot of things to say, a lot of chit chatty things. October was a pretty busy month for me and this is just going to be me talking about my fall favorites. If you are new here, I don't do monthly favorites. I do seasonal favorites because honestly, I just don't try out that many new products and I'm more selective on what I buy, but also what I accept as PR. Let's start with skincare. We're gonna be going into the products that I've been using specifically in September and October. A majority of them, you guys are probably going to recognize. There are a few that I might've just really focused on them on Instagram or just been using it off camera. So I'm excited to share these products with you. The first one is very new. This launched in the beginning of October. It's Merit Great Skin. It's an instant glow serum. Now, when I first got this, I really wasn't sure about it because it does have some oils in it. It's a bi-face serum that instantly hydrates and plumps skin for a smooth glass-like appearance, help to leave skin calmer, brighter, and more even over time. This packaging is absolutely beautiful. It's the most luxurious out of their whole entire line. It does not surprise me that they're entering into skincare. I can't wait to see what else they add to their skincare line because this is absolutely stunning. Weighted, heavy, the pump is really nice. This is quite liquidy, so just make sure to shake it first since it is a biphase. I only use one pump because that's all I really need. Mind you, I do have oily skin. And then I kind of just go right on in. Since it is liquidy and quite runny, you can make a bit of a mess, so just kind of rub it in quickly. So Merit did gift this to me, but I really do enjoy it, specifically for fall and winter when your skin is typically more dry. Now, if you have dry skin, you will probably need two to three pumps as suggested in their description. I do have a link down below if you guys are interested in this product or any other Merit products. I really do enjoy their products a lot. Majority of them are hits. There are a couple of misses. I've also done a full line review of their brand. At the time, I think they only had maybe five or six products, but I'll have that video right here if you guys are interested. See that nice glow? but it's not too greasy and slippery, which is what I was worried about. Ooh, I'm getting hot. Maybe I shouldn't have worn a sweater with all the lights. I just use this in the morning. I use some other products in the evening, like a retinol and just some more active products, but look how pretty that is. My last two skincare products are these two. They are both moisturizers, but I use the Ola Hendricks one in the evening because it is a bit thicker. This is the Strength Trainer Peptide Boost Moisturizer. I wasn't sure about this one because it's in a jar and it's quite thick and it doesn't move. But you need so little. This one is not the one that I'll be wearing today, but just to show you guys what that looks like. But then look, it just melts into the skin. I expect me to be thicker and to stay on really thick, but then it just nicely shears out, which makes sense why they're calling it a moisturizer. I just don't typically use this as a moisturizer, more like a night cream, I guess you would say. And then for the day, I've been using this. This is the Ali Oop Dream Team 3-in-1 Moisturizer Eye Cream and Mask. I love the packaging. This is refillable, so you just twist the bottom makes it easier for traveling and no messes. Just a light moisturizer, it's no fragrance, just very simple. You're gonna see a few other Ali Oop products. I did an Instagram Reels and I was talking about my favorite Ali Oop products and this was one of their newer products from them. These two complexion products I've been using quite a bit. This one is very new. This is the Summer Friday Skin Tint. I did a review of this, a wear test. If you guys wanna see that, I'll have that video right here. I'm not gonna be wearing it today since I want a little more coverage. Uh, this is more just bringing it back. I reviewed this earlier this year. This is the Jason Wu Tinted Moisture I Meets CC Cream in shade five. So this is like light coverage. This is sheer coverage. And I just like how this feels. And the shade match, surprisingly, is really good. As I put this on, I'm just gonna update you guys on what's been going on. So October was a busy month because we decided to host a murder mystery party. Never done that before, heard about them. And I'm someone that really gets into it, so I like to decorate. I'm not someone that does the bare minimum. 
but I don't really do that in life with anything, especially for like a party or an event. Because this is very new to me and no one else out of my friends have hosted a murder mystery party, all of it was like new, no idea what to expect or anything. So I was doing a lot of research and I found this company that does murder mystery parties, different themes, and there was a fairy tale theme. So we ended up doing that because it was the weekend of Halloween. I think I told everyone the beginning of October who confirmed. My friend from Florida, my mutual friend with my boyfriend, we met him uh, in, in college. He was supposed to come. Then the week of, he flaked. I hate flaky people, guys. I really do. And then another friend of mine flaked, and I'm someone where I will call you out, especially if you're doing something like that, because I just, I really don't appreciate that. I'm not someone who's passive like that at all. And I just want them to know how that made me feel, and that actually really affects, because this is not just a regular party. By you flaking, it affects everyone else and honestly, it affects the outcome of the party because let's say you are the murderer or the one that dies, obviously it affects everyone else. Luckily, it did not affect the party, thankfully, because I was kind of contemplating because I was the host that I was like, well, maybe I just need to ruin it for me, figure out who the murderer is, figure out who dies, just to make it fun for everyone else. But I was like, you know what? We're just gonna figure it out the night of, and it's okay. It's not my fault at the end of the day. But it, it turned out really well. I was the one that died. If you follow me on the Instagram, then you probably saw not too long ago. There's like a picture of me on the floor in my living room. The killer? a person you wouldn't expect. None of us was able to guess who the killer was. It was that hard. And of course, it was the character who was the most quiet, the more submissive. So you just wouldn't have thought that. And also, he was playing the game really well, a little too well, in my opinion. Thankfully, it all worked out because that's what I was really worried about, making sure everyone else has a good time. I'll take the stress on me but I want everyone else to have a really good time. Because I planned it out ahead of time, I really wasn't that stressed. I only got stressed when two people flaked on me. Then I was like, oh shit, what's gonna happen now? And then everyone had to bring in their own dish. A majority of us made dishes that were associated to our character, so I was Snow White. I made apple dumplings because apparently she made them for the dwarfs, and they ended up turning out really well. And if you know me personally, I am not a baker. I can cook, but I can't bake. If you don't make the measurements exact, then you messed up. I still remember in home ec where I messed up tablespoon and teaspoon and it ruined the cookies and I felt horrible. And it's been forever since then and I still feel really bad. So I get very anxious when I bake and it doesn't happen very often. And then this recipe, there were no pictures, there was no YouTube video, it was just words. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have this, I have to worry about the party going okay. So it was just, it was a lot going on. And then also with two puppies, you're always worried about how are they gonna do? and whatnot, we decided to keep one at the house and the other one went to daycare. But the storylines went so well, just how the characters were, because there were some couples at the party, but they weren't necessarily like Bell and Beast. One character from one storyline and then another one was from a different storyline, but they somehow intertwined so well where in their stories, they kind of had something going on. And since one of my dogs was absent, she was the one that was missing and the storyline is all about how Cinderella is missing and Prince Charming is finding a new wife. So he hosts this grand ball. It was really cute. I will have uh, my dog's poster right here just so you guys can see for any of you guys that don't follow me on Instagram. Okay, how is my face looking? It's very hard to do makeup and have a conversation that makes sense. I feel like this looks pretty good. I'm trying to remember the other dishes. Oh, the gray stuff from Beauty and the Beast during the Be Our Guest scene. Uh, the candlestick guy, I'm blanking on his name. He's like, try the gray stuff, it's delicious. So my friend who was Belle, she made that really good. It's basically Oreo pudding. Really delicious. And then we had dwarf hot dogs. We had grandma's brownies. We had Red Riding Hood's cookies. We did a Cinderella punch, caramel apple sangria, which was a hit. And then my one friend made some sort of apple bourbon drink. I got some donuts locally. 
So it was a lot of fun. We had a good amount of food. I was also worried about that. If there would be enough food for everyone. I'm such a worry, especially when they're new and I just don't know what to expect and I really have no control. It's kind of just like, well, you kind of just have to go with it. But I'm just so, so thankful it worked out for everyone. Oh, thank goodness. So that was for Halloween, the weekend. And then prior to that, we were doing a lot of content for my dog, Boo, who's the white dog. She has her own YouTube channel. We've been doing way more content on there. And we hired someone for the very first time, a social media manager, which was really exciting, but also daunting because you want to find someone really good that knows what they're doing. But at the same time, you want to make sure your expectations are met. That's very new for me, hiring someone. Right now, it's going pretty well. But something that I have to remind myself is this person isn't going to be perfect and you shouldn't have those kinds of expectations on them. And there needs to be realistic. But the most important thing for me wasn't the amount of experience you had. It was more so how good is your communication because that's everything to me. That has taken up a lot of our time now that I have meetings with him and just making sure everyone is on the same page. So if you've been seeing more content from Boo, that is why. We have someone that's helping us with the editing because that was a big thing for me. Editing just takes so much time. This product is definitely going to be in my yearly favorites, which I'm excited to do. I think this time I'm going to try to do a little bit earlier before Christmas, but we'll see. You guys are very familiar with this product. I haven't used it in quite some time. It's the Maybelline Instant Age Rewinder. It's a concealer. I have shade medium. I think back then I was using light, but I was looking at this. And I'm like, that's not that medium to me. I think this is quite light. Like, look at that compared to the rest of my skin. I don't know why they think this is medium, but it works so well. I just wanted something that was drugstore. I haven't been too happy with concealers that I've been picking out. We'll get into it when I do a full end review of this, of this brand. I'm just not happy with it, but it's incredibly popular with everyone else. Just not me, I don't know. I can't seem to make it work. For contour, I've been using the Ali Oops Stack the Odds. Now it has a blush, contour shade, and a highlighter. I've been primarily using the contour shade and the highlighter. I've also been using the blush. This blush in particular is more of a peach shade, but I want to show you guys a different blush that I've been enjoying. Very creamy and easy to blend. What else has been going on? I just got my couch cleaned professionally. I don't know if you guys have ever done that before. It's actually not that bad and not that expensive. For my couch, it can fit three people. It's a sofa sleeper. It's a, probably it's a cotton blend. It only costed 250 bucks, which is not bad for a couch that I've had for many years. And it got everything out and I'm just like, Thank goodness. I'm not getting a new couch anytime soon until we get a house. But I was just amazed because I don't think people talk about getting their furniture cleaned, but what a difference. I guess this is what it's like being an adult. I love Ali Oops products because they're multi-use. I saw someone on TikTok show these products and one of the top comments was like, what in the Totally Spies is this? And if you know Totally Spies, you know exactly what this person is talking about. I loved Totally Spies when I was little and this is totally a Totally Spies product. Only a certain group of people are going to understand that comment. Adding some color to the cheeks. I recently discovered this. I haven't had this product for very long, maybe a week. This is the e.l.f. Putty Blush. I'm probably the last person to try this out. I mainly got it because I wanted to wear something rosy on my cheeks for my character as Snow White and I thought this was perfect and I've heard such great things about the putty blush. And then just go in with the Rare Beauty Foundation Brush. I haven't used this for foundation, only for blush. But I like how it looks and it just gives the perfect blushing look. And now I understand why people love this product so much. And you can build it up very easily too. And moving on to powder, this is the Refi Water Based Powder. Something that I learned about this product after I posted that video is that if you apply too much, it could look kinda, I don't know if I wanna say cakey, but it like lifts. 
So less is more with this product. Sometimes I can go heavy handed, but what I just did there, then I don't add any more. Not gonna give you any coverage, it's just going to set the makeup and that's about it. So if you're looking for coverage, I would go with something else. But if you want something that feels like nothing on the skin, check this one out. My skin looks so good. Sometimes after powder, I feel like I lose a bit of the blush. So I'm just gonna go back in and apply a little bit more. This brow product I've been using nonstop. It's from Patrick Cha. It's the Major Brow Lamination Gel. This works so well. I do have a drugstore option that I really enjoy that I recently just talked about, but I felt that that was a little too soon for fall favorites, so I will most likely be including that in my winter favorites. Filter my brows off camera because it's nothing new. It's just something that I've had in my collection for some time. So let's move on to the eyes. This eyeshadow palette by Il Maquillage and Kathleen Light. It's so good. I've been wearing this eyeshadow palette solely for the last two months. I've dipped into the Patrick Ta one, but that one, I just don't use as often as I use this one. The Patrick Ta one is very glam, and this one, although you can make it glam, it could be more everyday, which is why I've been wearing it so much. So we're going to be using this. I've already created a couple looks on my channel. I love using this shade for the crease. I always like to start using this, just to start everything off. As I'm filming this, I'm in the process of ordering all of the products that I want from the Sephora sale. And I almost got an eyeshadow palette, specifically the Mario one, but then I decided no. And you want to know why? Because I watched a video and I was like, oh, that's not what I thought it was going to look like. It ended up looking warmer. And you know what? I saved, what, 60 something bucks? But it looked beautiful on social media, but then once I saw the video, I was like, eh, I'm okay. So I don't think I'm going to be getting an eyeshadow palette this year, at least not a big one of this size at least not for the holidays maybe not this year because I, I definitely got some new ones but not for the holidays should i do something boring or should i spice it up a bit because i always as far as like every day use these and these so i tend to stay right here but i thinking i'm gonna go in with this one right here and all of my i don't know last eight videos, I think I linked this palette in every single one of them. I'm gonna deepen up the outer corner using this color right here. Almost done with the makeup look. I wanna go in with one of these. I'm thinking this one, it's more of a champagne. I don't know if I just wanna do like the center or if I wanna go like this. All right, I'm just gonna go for it. Is this not so pretty? This is why I love using this. It's like a one and done shade. This is the brown liner that I've been using for the last two months from the same collection. It has some shimmer to it. It has really great wear and very easy to blend. I'm hoping you can still get this collection, guys. I will say this sharpens kind of like finicky. So I use the Ulta Beauty one. I also have the Essence one that's really good. For whatever reason, this pencil doesn't like the Essence one, but it loves the Ulta Beauty one. So if you are having trouble sharpening this specific pencil, maybe try a different sharpener because it does sharpen well. You kind of just have to find the right pair. Another eyeliner that I've been really enjoying is from Persona Cosmetics. This is the 24 hour waterproof eye pencil in shade Plum. I've been really into plum liner, plum mascara that I'll be talking about right after this. I've just been enjoying something different that's not black and that it's not brown. And this looks beautiful, especially on brown and green eyes. I did a little tutorial on Instagram. I'll have it right here for any of you guys who missed it since I'm not wearing this. It's just so pretty and it's everyday and it's not too bright or vibrant where it looks like you can't wear it most days. I think you can and it's something else that you can wear that's not black or brown. So what I would pair it with is this voluminous mascara from L'Oreal. They have black, do they have brown? Maybe. Uh, this one is in burgundy. The shade is very, very similar to the plum. I think they go nicely together. I mainly got this mascara for the color. Uh, the mascara is pretty good. I like using a primer with it, but I just like the two together. I just love that look. So I've been doing this a lot as well. The first time I tried 
this pencil, which I'd like to warn you guys on, it does fade. So if you don't use any kind of eyeshadow primer, it's going to fade. I didn't deal with much creasing, but just the fading. Now the other two mascaras that I've been enjoying, I have a lot of mascaras in this video. So there are two of them. This one I reviewed two months ago. This is the By Terry Lash Expert Twist Mascara. At first, I just thought this mascara was average. I actually enjoyed it more when I used a mascara primer, which tends to happen. This has been one of my top mascaras the last couple months. And then this one came out, when did this come out? In September. This is the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara in Jet Black. I do like this mascara too. I find this mascara to be more of an everyday mascara. It defines, it lengthens, it's very easy to remove. For me, it doesn't hold a curl. It doesn't give me volume, which is why I find it to be more of an everyday mascara. I'm still hoping that Tower 28 makes this mascara in a brown because then that truly is an everyday mascara for me. Because my eyes are a little more dramatic, I am going to go in with this one since this one actually gives me more volume. That's kind of insane, especially for my lashes. This eye makeup turned out really well. So I have another eye product. I won't be able to show you guys today since it's totally different from what I'm wearing. This is the NYX Ultimate Glow Shots in this really beautiful, I don't even know what color to call this. It's Plum Player. Really pretty. What I like about this, and I got this on a whim because I saw it, I was like, ooh, that's really pretty. And it comes in a bronze tone, champagne, rose gold, more colors that you would wear every day. But this one just like stood out to me. What I like about it is that it's quite thin and it dries very quickly because usually I don't like these types of products because they're just way too thin. It just really surprised me how well it lasted. I'm just overall aware of it. Maybe it's more lilac, I would say. But if you are into kind of like a one and done look, definitely check these out. Before we move on to lips, I am going to add some highlighter from Stack the Odds. It's just like a champagne tone. The last products are the lips. It's basically what I've been talking about. So whether it's the brown lip glosses, the dupes from the Fenty Heat. I have two dupes right here. Both are really great. Also just been using the original one. Not sure what I'm going to be doing today. And then brown lip liner. Right now in my hands, I have the Juvia's Place in Cola. And then this one that I've had for a minute, it's not brown. It's the LA Girl Lip Liner in Cafe. This is kind of like a nudie beige tone. This is my go-to when I go for something nude that doesn't wash out my lips. And then this, which is so much fun. You get three lip products in one, and I like how they're mini. You're actually going to get through all of them. So we have three different finishes. We have a cream, we have a gloss, and we have a matte. They are ever so slightly different, so they're not all the same. So I don't know, should I use this or should I do something else? Mm, maybe not these. If you're curious how these look, definitely check out my Instagram. I don't know if I want such a dark brownie look. So maybe I will do the Ella Girl one as my lip liner. Then I think I'm gonna go in with the Honest Beauty Gloss since that's not as dark. I don't want this video to be too redundant so definitely check out my hair care routine video because that's where I talk about my current favorite hair products and those are the products that would have been in this video and I've also talked about those products in a vlog. I've talked about those products in another video so i have maybe three four videos where i talk about my favorite hair products so definitely check out those videos but one product that i want to talk about today is the revlon one step so we're all familiar with this one but they just came out with the blowout curls that i've been really enjoying unfortunately i'm not wearing it today but i did blow out my hair using this but i've just been enjoying like these all together have been my go-to and nothing else. I did go in with a curling iron because I just, oh no, I wasn't thinking about it. This would have given me a larger curl, but this is also second day, so it's a little more relaxed. I'm just so obsessed with this that I can't stop using it and I always need to have it on me. So that is all for my hair products. I hope you guys enjoyed the fall favorites video. I hope you enjoyed this look. Hopefully none of these products were too surprising. Maybe some if you don't follow me on my Instagram. I'll catch you guys in another video. Bye!